Hey, BookTube. If you were um, viewing our um, live stream on the Black Star Homestead channel, um, it just stopped abruptly when I started talking about going topless and a loincloth, and that was because I forgot to plug the computer in. So that was my fault. Apologies. Um, YouTube isn't censoring me. They're not against me being in a loincloth. So allegedly, allegedly. So for those of you who you know were there, um, oh, I'm sorry about that. But um, since we're here, I thought I would do um, the rest of that book haul I was doing um, the other day. So um, last time we did the um, dollar book bag haul thing from the Landers thrift shop, and I went back and got a bag of what I believe to be Zoe's books. So I'll be showing some of those as well. But I also want to take this time to talk about um, Space Cowboy, which is a bookstore in Joshua Tree at 61871 29 Palms Hall Highway in Joshua Tree, um, located in Sun Alley. Um, really cool shop. Um, I picked this up there. Um, this is a cool little thing called meet your local writers and it just has like a ton of stuff about the writers from the area um what stores carry their books around here um and then they have these like meet and greets where you can meet all of them it's just it's really just damn it's just a really cool really cool put together thing and um the paper's really nice and they do zines out here too, so I gotta find out who is printing this for them because these are kinda off the chain. So, moving right along. So outside they had these um, little cases that were like the dollar case. Got a bunch of westerns. So um, I think I have this, but um, this was in really good shape and um, it just looked like I should get it. So Sackett, Louis L'Amour, um, the fourth of the Sackett books. So cool. Um, William Colt McDonald, Law and Order Unlimited. This old Signet copy. Look at that. That is just, this is kind of like you could hear it cracking when I open it. So this is going to need some TLC before that gets read. Um, Guns of the Clan by William L. Hobson. Surefire Hell. What company is this? Curtis Books. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Uh, William Hobson, Hang Tree Range. Look at that cover. Range War Code was simple. Kill or be killed. Tie his hands behind him. This is a McFadden Bartell book. I am not familiar with this publisher, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then we got a Fawcett Gold Medal, William Hobson. Gunfire at Salt Fork. He had a five-notch past and plenty more room on his gun. Oh, nice, nice. Then um, I noticed they had um, a bunch of uh, long arm stuff. And um, so I grabbed one, but then I saw this other um, series that I'll show you about in a second here. So this is Long Arm 63 by Tabor Evans um, and the James County War. Yep. Long Arms grapples with a ruthless cattleman and three beautiful women. But. They had um, the Lone Star series there as well by Wesley Ellis, government name. Um, 
A corrupt cattle town explodes as an innocent man is sentenced to hang. Lone Star in a range war. A lot of range wars going on. And look, this one's got Kung Fu in it. Are you joking me? Um, I think that the Kung Fu guy is a reoccurring character because he's on the cover of all of these. Um, yeah. Jesse and Kai follow a town's bloody secret to Boot Hill. Lone Star and the Phantom Gunman. Look at that. And then we have Jesse and Kai. I can't even hear it. Jesse and Kai risk their necks on a trail of a gruesome killer. Lone Star and the Arizona Strangler. Wow, this one looks spicy. So, I'm really digging... Oops, that was a little bit of a disaster. I'm really digging picking up the um, adult westerns. I just hope I don't hate them. Because that would be embarrassing. That would be, oh, I need to make a new lot for sale on eBay. Um, then I got um, John Sladek TikTok. Daw release of it. Um, and then we start getting into the crazier stuff. They had a bunch of books hanging up on walls. And this one, he um, was like, you're really going to like this if you like this, this, and that. So this is William L. Chester, Kiaga, Kioga of the Unknown Land. Yoga the Snowhawk. So, yeah. Gotta look at that. Then, this one was where I kind of went out of control. Um, Edgar Rice Burroughs and a nice little ace beyond the farthest star. Um, and then, um, another ace I picked up was, um, the son of Tarzan. Tarzan's only rival, Korak the Killer. This is such a good book, and I feel like a lot of people don't give this book the credit it's due. That was seriously probably, like... Out of the first 10 Tarzan books, that was probably my favorite one. Yeah, I think it... Uh, I'm pretty sure that was my favorite one. Um, and then I saw this, and I completely lost my effing mind. Um, I didn't even know this happened, but I guess this was back in 05 or 06. Okay. I need to find out if they did the whole series, or if they just picked this one, and Frankenstein and Dracula. But Creature from the Black Lagoon, Times Black Lagoon, by Paul D. Flippipo. I probably made that awful. Look at that. Times Black Lagoon. And the letters are all raised. Oh my gosh, this is just like... I want to touch it all over. Um... In 1954, deep in the Amazon jungle, an expedition found what they assumed was one of those missing links in the chain of human evolution. An immensely powerful amphibian creature that seemed to step out of the mists of time. They tried to tame it, to break its will, to change its very being with surgery torture, but the beast rebelled, killing almost all who stood in its way. That was an extremely long sentence. But was the creature truly a throwback? A survivor of some prehistoric time before time? Or was it something more? I don't like where this is going. I'm going to come right out and tell you. If they try to change the origin of creature, 
I might lose my crap. In the year 2015, one scientist will try to answer those questions using a time machine to pierce the veil of history and journey back to the distant Devonian era. What he finds there will not only splinter his vision of what the creature might be, but may very well change the history of human race forever. Blending what we know about Creature from the Black Lagoon on its ear. That doesn't make it good. Critically praised science fiction author Paul D. Filippo. Filippo. Maybe it's Filippo. Reinvents the classic monster with the tale of time travel. <laughs> God damn it. Why can't you just fucking tell a good story based off a of source material? Ugh. Now I'm going to have to hate read this, and I'm already pissed. And then the other books in this series are Dracula Asylum by Paul Whitcover and Frankenstein The Shadow of Frankenstein by Stefan Petrucha. I'd like to see them try to change the goddamn Dracula and Frankenstein. You know what? <sighs> Reinvents the classic monster tale with a time with a tale of time travel, horror, and mystery that mixes the best elements of 1950s Cold War science fiction with today's cutting edge cyberpunk and a vision of what terrors still lurk. In the swamp. Nuts. You might have completely fucked Creature from the Black Lagoon. Maybe that's why I've never heard of this. And maybe that's why I've never seen another copy of it. Kind of pissed off right now. Does that sound good to you, babe? I wasn't listening. So I'm nuts. And I wasn't listening. <laughs> nice. And then finally, um... Uh... I got this, Heinlein, Robert A. Heinlein, um, edited by Joseph D. Olander and Martin Harry Greenberg. So, um, uh, Robert A. Heinlein has been described as one of the fathers of modern science fiction. He's also one of the few science fiction writers who may have helped make sci-fi well-known in mainstream literary circles. He has published voluminously, and his works almost continuously in print have sold in the millions. But Heinlein is also a writer of whose fiction and ideas often lead to strong feelings and reactions. Certainly few science fiction authors have um, engineered as many different points of view over as long a period of time. Just when observers thought they had isolated the tenor of his work, he produced Stranger in a Strange Land which appeared to contradict what he had been saying for more than 20 years. Besides this, the other important novels like Starship Troopers, Double Star, and The Moon is a Harsh, harsh, harsh Mistress, and Time Enough for Love, the expert um, contributors to this volume consider Heinlein shorter fiction, especially those stories which have been become known as the Future History series. Um, so yeah, so this is just like a biography slash critique of his work, I guess. So this this will be fun. I was kind of looking for something. Um, ooh. Also in this series, Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, Philip K. Dick, Ray Badbury, and Ursula K. Le Guin. Holy crap. That sounds pretty awesome. This is the Writers of the 21st Century series. So, um... I was looking for something like that. So that's cool. Now I'm going to show you the books that Zoe left at the thrift store before I show you the big special surprise at the end, which is probably only exciting to me. But anyway. So first off, we have James A. Michener, Journey, which is very small um, and with very large print for a Michener book. So we didn't know if this was like a like in the beginning of his career kind of thing. Ooh, babe, there's maps in here. Really? Yeah, look. 
Ooh. That's where they went. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. So this is about a couple people who, I guess, go by canoe to the Arctic Circle. Holy crap. Um, to find gold. So Zoe's losing her mind. Um, and this is in great shape. Really, really good shape. Although this page looks folded. Yeah, this is how far they got. The person who had this got to page 43 and then just decided, eh, fuck it. I'm not going to listen to it anymore or read it anymore. So there's that. Then being the huge pervert that she is, Zoe picked up the demon lover on the sexuality of terrorism by Robin Morgan. I didn't pick it up, guys. You did pick it up. And, okay, so here's the deal. I went back to the thrift store without up. Zoe. And I saw what it said. It was like, man. Okay. Well, they said that they didn't take her bag of books. And they said they couldn't find it. Um, and that nothing had been moved over there or whatever. But then when I went back there, I saw some of the books that she had been holding that she had put in a bag up on the shelf. Like in its own little thing by itself. So obviously somebody went back there, picked the books up out of a bag and put them back on a shelf, but no one would own up to it. I wonder why, when I come in there asking a bunch of questions to a bunch of little old ladies, that none of them f fess up to where the hell my wife's books went. <laughs> so, whatever. And then she got um, a Little House on the Prairie by um, Laura Ingalls. Wilder. Oh, look, that little cheeky dog's chasing behind their wagon, babe. Yeah, oh, my gosh. So, um, <clears throat> she grabbed this, and this is the only reason why I knew that that was her stack of books, because I saw her, or she was talking about this the next, or that night. But apparently there was some, like, biography about um, Ingalls. I can't remember if it was a biography, but it was something to do with living inside the story you know what I mean yeah like living the little house on the prairie so and I'm kind of into my stuff right now what kind of stuff baby? <laughs> since you're like not paying attention and on Instagram <laughs> I'm kind of into my homesteading pioneering pioneer stuff yeah yeah okay yeah. um Alice McDermott a novel charming Billy don't know what that is. Um, this one here has an amazing dust jacket, but it's all fucked up. So that really bums me out. This is Dorothy Eden, The Shadow Wife, a novel by the author of Winterwood. Look at that. Holy that crap. Amazing. And then that that's Dorothy Eden at home with her. Um, new electric typewriter. Is that electric? Nope, that is just a portable manual. Wow. I saw some it? awesome typewriters while we were out. So, that might happen. Okay. This is Nick Dybeck, When Captain Flint Was Still a Good Man. I just saw that water and I was like, ooh, I bet Zoe would like that. Yes. Yeesh. Correct. I'm so easily pleased, aren't I? Yeah. I have a type, definitely, of stuff I like. You definitely have a type, babe. And then you saw this and got all excited. In the Wake of Madness, a murderous voyage of the whale ship uh, Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> maybe, um, by Joan Durrett, author of Hen Frigates. I don't, know. Whale ship. I don't know what the hell I was just talking about there. So look at that. A genuine nautical thriller, a page turner, says Richard Zacks, author of The Pirate Hunter. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, look at that. All right. That cover really reminds me of those um, Caleb Carr covers. Yeah, I know. It really does. No, uh, Caleb Carr. Yeah. Didn't he do the... Um, the Somethingist? Yes, you're right. 
And and who did um the White City? Oh, that's Eric Larson. Eric Larson, yeah. Like that too. Yeah. Um, and then I put this in there because a little birdie named Brit keeps ragging on about this book like it's the greatest thing that ever happened. The Bitch by Alex Garland. I'm sorry, The Beach. That was not a Freudian slip. I really do like Brit. I'm just joking, Britt. That was all planned. Oh, yeah. All right. So some of you might know this from Leo DiCaprio. Um, that's how I know it. So we'll see. Cold Mountain. I actually think you'd like this. Have you read it? What? Cold Mountain? Yeah, I've read it. Oh, okay. So I've also got it in that same cover. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, this is going into the currency box really good condition and then we got the privileges a novel by jonathan d do you know anything about this babe no did you pick this up or did i pick it up on accident no i think i picked it up and then i put it down again but i, I don't know i might read it okay and then we have angela's ashes is this going into the yeah, I've currency got that. box? It's really okay. good. But it's also really good. Gotta hide that. And then I saw a couple um, that I wanted to get. People would love, there's a lot of people would love Angela's Ashes. It's a really good book. Well, Zoe was saying I would love this book. I don't know, though. The Thorn Birds. By Colleen. I don't know if you'll like the book, but you would have absolutely loved the show. Oh, yeah? Oh, God, yeah. It's your kind of cheese all over. Excuse me? Yeah. Are you talking about the one where the girl could talk to her pet monkey? <laughs> no, it's... It's, um... He's a priest. Like a... It's, oh, man. Richard Chamberlain. Oh, I like Richard Chamberlain. What am I talking about? I have no idea. That cartoon where they're, the dad's like the crocodile hunter and they go into the jungle and she has, she could talk to animals and she's got a pet monkey. And that the, the wild thorn birds. Whatever. I don't care anymore. Okay. Um, and then I saw a hard case crime, so I had to pick that up. Um, Cut Me In by Ed McBain with a lovely painting. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Richard Chamberlain nuzzles Rachel Ward in the steamy TV blockbuster. But in real life, she's run off with Oz oh, Ozzy co-star Brian Brown. That's not as exciting as I Brian thought. Brian Brown. Brian Brown. <laughs> look, that's the cover of People. What's the what's the date on this? Let me look this up. Um, March 20th, 1983. Yep. God, Richard Chamberlain's got a head full of dark hair. When I ran into him at Chipotle, <laughs> he was as gray as a ghost. Okay. It's um, a steamy thing. You, it's like I love steamy. Lives. You love it. So how is that the same thing as that book you just showed me? Because it's the Thorn Birds. Like, does it take place in cowboy times? Yeah. Mm. Okay, and then I got um, Raymond Carver, Where I'm Calling From, Stories. He looks really serious. And I think they lightened his eyes. They kind of photoshopped that to make him more piercing. Because I do not believe his eyes were that white. I believe he was probably three sheets to the wind when they took that picture anyway. God, can you imagine him, like, at dinner? Like, how was your day today? Did you enjoy... Let me get closer. Did you enjoy yourself today? What did you do? He looks scary. He looks like Laura Palmer's dad. So, um... Oh, no. I bet I would like this. What? The Thorn Birds is a 1977 best-selling novel by Australian author Colleen McCulloch. 
set primarily on Drogheda, a fictional sheep station in the Australian outback named after Drogheda Island. The story focuses on the Cleary family and spans the years 1915 to 1969. That's right up your keister. You love that kind of crap. Yeah. See, I don't want to know the life story of everybody. I just want someone to walk in and shoot somebody. In Dragida, Maggie re meets Ralph de Bricassart, a young, capable, and ambitious priest. A capable priest, huh? Yeah. It's steamy. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so are you going to read that? Probably not. I think you will. That sounds right up your cornhole. Wow. That's getting worse. I'm going to stop talking. Please do. Okay, so the book that I ordered forever ago finally showed up at the post office. <clears throat> so I went to pick it up, and I've been reading it, and boy, let me tell you that it is just amazing. So we're going to do a slow reveal here. What? Oh! And if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw this book, so that wasn't very exciting. Okay, so this is Dick Tracy, the official biography, The Life and Times of America's Number One Crime Stopper. This book, oh, and it's by Jay Mader. This book is so much fun. Like, I'm absolutely loving this book. Not only <clears throat> is it going year by year, talking about like all the stuff that Dick Tracy as a character is going through as if he was a person but um it's got a bunch of bits from the comics ton oh it's just so good and also is going over like what's happening to Chester Gould while um this is stuff is going on like there in fact when the comic strip first started in um, 1931, it um, quickly became the most violent um, comic strip that ever existed. And um, one of the things Gould hung his hat on was not only um, like violence and all that other stuff, but um, all the scientific police breakthroughs and stuff like that so <clears throat> like he would have like um he would go into detail about how fingerprints work and all this other stuff which is cool but then this chick started um saying like okay you cannot do this you're like you're taking pretend science fiction things and talking about them as if they exist and now the public's gonna think that at the police station we have a scientist with a ray that can tell if you're telling the truth or not. And just stuff like that. And, um, like, what battles he had to fight with her. And then, like, um, what towns stopped um, running the Dick Tracy strip because they thought it was too violent. Um, and how Dick Tracy seriously was, like... Um, when he pitched it, he probably spent like an, a total of like a week thinking up the idea. And it ended up being the thing he did <clears throat> daily for like the next like 45 years. It's just nuts. Um, and like I think where I'm at right now, I think I'm in 33 or 34 so it's only been going on a couple years. Um, I'm in a chapter right now that's talking about um, Tess, his his lady, his lady friend. Um, and then soon I think I'm going to get into the grotesques, which I'm excited about. Because I, I think that's the reason why everyone likes Dick Tracy. It's not because Dick Tracy is so cool. It's because the villains are so ridiculous and awful. Not awful in a way like they're horrible characters, but they're like, they're despicable people that um, 
are just so over the top. And like Chester Gold's Gold's whole thing was he wanted to make all the bad guys <clears throat> really like ugly and deformed because that's how he looked at what they're like they were ugly and deformed on the inside, so he wanted that to be expressed on the outside kind of thing. It's just so fascinating. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I love serialized anything. Um, like, if you want me to really like something, serialize it. And give it to me in little bite-sized chunks every day. And I'll completely lose my flippin' mind. Um... And I've toyed back and forth with different kinds of doing cereals and different forms of cereals. Um, and I have a pretty solid idea of how I'm going to continue that in my own work. But there are a couple logistic things that I got to figure out first. Um, but man, I'm telling you, um, that book it's, it's totally fun i'm having like a like i'm getting giddy when i read it and i've needed that i haven't gotten giddy reading something in a quite some time so <clears throat> it's been really really fun so far and more than anything it's been inspiring and since nano's coming up um and i've already been doing so much like Dr. Frankenstein crap as far as like um, chopping and cutting stuff out and adding stuff in and pulling something from something else and wedging it into my story over here. Um, my story is going to be a seven foot tall sewn together monster by the time it's done. Um, so having this right now, like right before we start um, Nano is just... Oh, it's such a breath of fresh air. I can't even... I'm just... I'm so happy with it right now. So if you like Dick Tracy, or if you just like <clears throat> serialized stuff, if you, like, grew up like me, um, excited when you saw that your folks got the newspaper because you know you get the funnies out of it or something, or you'd be able to read Dick Tracy or The Amazing Spider-Man or Buck Rogers or whatever... Um, other like more um, action-based comic you could get out of there. I mean, we all like Garfield and Peanuts and Calvin and Hobbes and stuff, but you know, we got we got to get serious every now and then, right? So, um, if you were one of those people, and if you cut them out, like like we used to cut them out all the time, and in fact, my grandma because the paper we got didn't have Calvin and Hobbes in it. And that's just a big no-no. So my, I had my grandma, because her newspaper had Calvin and Hobbes. So she would cut out all the Calvin and Hobbes strips throughout the week. And then once she would get the Sunday one, she would put that in there and fold them all up and put them in an envelope and mail them to me so I could like kind of stay caught up a bit. Um, and it's funny, because like, sometimes like because of the ink and the newsprint, when you would open it up, like I would unfold it and pull all the strips out and there would be like all like inked into one another because they were like folded all tight and stuff in there hysterical of oh, the olden days um but yeah so that's that and um i really highly recommend it um it right now it has the same feel for me that astounding had for me last year so um definitely Pick it up if you are interested in history, publication, anything like that. It's it's a really good read so far. So, um, by the way, Space Cowboy, if you're ever in Joshua Tree, go take a look at it. Um, there's a few other shops kind of local to that area that we're going to check out um, and let you know how those ones are as well. Uh, maybe next time we go to Space Cowboy, we'll um, do more of a vlog. Yeah? Okay. She was in charge of vlogging. We have four videos and you can't hear really anything. You can hear them. They're just you singing. No. It's a lot of wind. Because she was breaking it. <laughs> Am I right? Oh, wait. 
I'm doing that towards you. Am I right? Okay, so anyway, guys, um, let me know down below what you think of these books, if you have any of them, if you think there's some that I should get to right away because they're so flipping good that it's making your own brain melt. Um, yeah, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.